Welcome guys to this video tutorial. I will show you how to create, read, update and delete using PHP 7 and MariaDB 10. The first thing we need to do is we need to create the database. Therefore, we go to localhost and we point to PHP my admin. You may have a different panel as I have here, but the important thing is that we can create a new database. We are going to call it CRUD and we're going to select the collation to be UTF-8 and before general CI. This collation allows us to create any or to store any kind of characters, including, for example, emojis and the CI means case insensitive. So we create it and we need to create a table. Let's call it users. The users table will have one column for the ID, the name, the email, and the password. It doesn't really matter how many columns you create, just create those four to build the exercise with me. The ID column is going to have the data type to be a serial. I'm not going to explain the data types for the database because this is not the purpose of this tutorial. We're going to have a name. It's going to be a bar char. The length of it is going to be 20. We're going to create an email. It's also going to be a bar char. The length is going to be 20 and the password, which is going to be a bar char and the length is going to be 255 for the password and let's change the email to be also 255. So we allow the email to be quite long. Let's save. And now we have our database built. To test it, we're going to manually insert some data. Click on the Insert tab and let's fill it up with data. The ID, since this is going to be auto-incremented automatically because we gave the data type to be serial, we leave it empty. The name is going to be A. The mail is going to be at A. The password, let's call it pass A. Let's fill up the second row as well. The name is going to be B, the mail is going to be at B, and the password is going to be pass B. Let's click on go, and the data should have been inserted. Let's browse it. So now we have our table users with some data, A and B. This is enough to test the system. The next thing we need to do is we need to connect to this database from PHP. Therefore, we move to VS Code and we're going to create the main file. This file will allow us to connect to the database when we create, update, insert or delete. So what we're going to do is create a file and let's call it db.php. This file has one main function to talk to the database. So we open and close the PHP tags. Let me just make sure that this is zooming correctly. Yeah. And now we're going to create a try catch. Follow my advice. Whenever you do something with the database, whether you connect or you crop the data, always put the statements inside a try catch. And now we're going to tell PHP that we can get an exception. And this is going to be a PDO exception. Exception and we're going to grab the, the exception in a variable that we happen to call ex. You can call that whatever you want. And then we will just echo the exception. Before we continue, let's go to Postman and let's test this db.php file. In Postman, we're going to create a new request. It's going to be a get. We're going to point to localhost db.php. By the way, guys, I am coding under my htdocs or www folder directly, therefore I can just point to it. If you are coding under a different directory, so the dear name that you're coding on should be placed there and then you can point to the file. Let's test it. I don't have any errors for now, that's quite good. I'm going to walk you through every mistake that I can come up with so you learn the whole thing. When you connect to a database, you need to have the username for the database. So let's create a variable. Let's call it db username. 
Make sure that you put db in front of it because when you include or require this file, maybe you will have some crashes between variable names. So I just make sure that this is going to be the db username. So if a user, a normal user wants to use it, we not we will not collide the database name, uh, the variable name. This is going to be the root. I'm connecting as root, and we also need a db password. And the db password is going to be empty for now. If you are in a Mac computer, probably the password will be root as well. We also need to connect to the database, so we need the connection string. And in this case, it's going to be MySQL. The host is going to be localhost. The DB name is going to be the database name that we just created. We call it CRUD. And the char set is going to be UTF-8 MB4. The same that we selected as the collation. I will do a semicolon there. And then I will save. And let's move to Postman and test it. There are no errors. Now, if we make a mistake, pretend that we forget the semicolon, we save and then we test. Now the exception is telling us that we have this issue. So we need to fix it, line number five. So actually it's in line number four, but it displays line number five. We do semicolon and then we fixed it. So this is what we have so far for the, collect, uh, for the connection. We also need some settings for the database, usually called options. So I'm going to create a variable called options, and this is going to be an array of options. The first thing we need to do is how are we going to handle the errors when we do something against the database? My advice is that you should always use try catches so you don't have to do if else statements inside your code. Not that you will never do it, but eventually it is just to use a try catch. So to do that, we are going to set up a PDO ATTR ERR mode. And this is going to tell PDO how we want to handle the errors. Since this is an associative array, I do this symbol. You can think of it as a fat arrow. And then the PDO error mode is going to be exception. We do a comma, and this allows us to use try catches. We also need to know how we're going to fetch the data from the database. So for now, I will just set the ATTR default fetch mode. And the default fetch mode is going to be the PDO fetch object. Actually, it's not called object, it's just called OBJ. So this will allow us to use JSON objects, and this will be allowed us to use a try catch. We save it. Now we have a box here. We have the comma, and you can see that I forgot here the double column there. I guess that's a box. Let's test it quickly in Postman. No errors. That's good. Once we have the options, we need to connect to the database. So we are going to create a variable. This db variable is the one that we will be referring to from the create, read, update, and delete. So make sure that you remember that variable. And this is going to be a new PDO connection. This new PDO, this function, takes several arguments. The first one is the database connection. So we say that's going to be the connection. The second one is the username, so we call it db username. Then we also need to pass the password, db password. And the last connection, the last argument, uh, the options that we have for the database. So we pass the options. Save it, and now we're going to test it in Postman. As you can see, there are no errors, there are no bugs, therefore, if we had an error, pretend that we have a different username, root x, we save and test it. Now you can see the PDO exception taking place. If you do not write the exception here, let's say that you just write error, 
then what you will see is just the error. I don't advise you to do this because you will not know what the error is. So for now, while we are testing the system, let's just do the EX. Now we have this created. I'm going to delete the X and we can continue doing the create, read, update and delete. All right, so let's go ahead in the next video and create a connection to the database and insert a user into it.